is the Northern Ireland Assembly Senate Chamber programme signed. This Okay, members, good afternoon. Welcome back to the Public Accounts Committee and a happy new year to everyone. Um, today's meeting is in accordance with the revised guidance for committees during the public health crisis, which were revised on the 2nd of June 2020. Um, members, tea and coffee has been provided in line with the COVID regulations, um, but in terms of protecting yourselves from the pandemic, I would ask members to please clear their cups and glasses away after the meeting. Um, uh, if you wouldn't mind. Also, uh, at the end of the meeting, if we be careful not to congregate and ensure two-metre distancing is adhered to at all times. Broadcasting, can you bring in Mr Andrew Muir and Mr Cal Boylan uh, to the meeting, please? Take those members uh, who are joining us remotely and Starley just confirm that they can see and hear us okay? Yeah. Okay. Um, right, members, Mr. Donnelly, the Controller and Auditor General, uh, Mr. Kyle Bingham, Family Support Officer, will join at the start of the meeting. Uh, members, the main objectives of today's meeting to consider the, any correspondence received over the Christmas recess period. Uh, and to consider the draft press release for a report on the Landway project and digital transformation, and to further consider uh, our draft forward work program until March 2021. Members, we also have a ministerial direction to consider. This is a substantial amount of correspondence to address when considering the forward work program. And I would suggest that we discuss PAC's primary, sorry, primacy over the Northern Ireland Audit Office reports, and perhaps why we could release some of the reports at regular intervals. Um, are members content that we go into public session, or content, should you say continue in public session? Okay, members, we are now continuing in public session, and welcome to today's meeting. Members, I have to advise that uh, mobile phones must be set to airplane mode and turned off. It is not sufficient to put mobiles on silent mode, as they continue to interfere with the assembly recording. This session is being recorded in video and audio, and can be access live via the online streaming either on the assembly website or democracy live so first item agenda is uh, agenda item one apologies apologies from mr hilditch any um, others clark sure. miss flynn yes yes yeah, thank you um, i'm not sure if Catherine has joined on the line but um he's having some um internet difficulties so he's asked if He's not able, able to join. Can we um, just notice apologies, please? Okay. <clears throat> right. Any others? Okay. Agenda item two then is the minutes of the meeting of the 17th of December that are pages six to ten of your pack. Um, uh, are you content uh, that I would sign those minutes? Members agreed? Agreed. 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 Okay, thank you. So, agenda item three then is declaration of members' interests. And, uh, each meeting, members are required to register relevant financial and other interests in the members' interests. Does any member have any interest to wish to declare this afternoon? Mm. No. Nope. Okay, thank you. Um, matters arising from the minutes. Anyone, any matters that want to raise from the minutes? No. Nope. Okay. Agenda item five then is uh, correspondence, pages 15 to 186 of your pack. And they refer to correspondence dated the 16th of December 2020 from the CAPAC, and pages 15 to 16 of your pack regarding attending the AGM and conference of Wednesday, the 17th of March 2021. And a response is due by the 31st of January. They also have included a survey to complete. <clears throat> the High Public Accounts Committee has adopted during COVID-19 
to be completed by the 31st of January also. And apparently the final section of the survey includes questions uh, of answers feasible of conducting multi country joint inquiry that would include different PACs from Crumb Commonwealth conducting the same inquiry topics around the same time. Um, Clark, anything you want to add to that? Um, just that um, if, if uh, the team takes a look at the, the questionnaire, we can you know, put something together and give mm. it back to the committee. And also the, the AGM just wanted to point out if members wanted to attend, um, just to note the, 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 the date and maybe have a think, because it is the Some 17th of mm. March, which is a public holiday. So. Okay, well, if members can, if members want to participate, if they can contact the clerk, but as the clerk said, it's um, it's a public holiday because it's St Patrick's Day, um, which obviously it isn't in the rest of the country. I'm also not sure about the idea, to be honest, um, and I say this respectfully as chair of the... Um, uh, branch Northern Ireland branch of the Commonwealth Parliamentary Association. I'm not sure the, the you know the the sense uh, and the um, rationale between a report across the Commonwealth on the re COVID because it would be very different across the UK. Never mind across the Commonwealth. So uh, I'm not convinced about that. Is it? Sorry, may I chair. Sorry. I was just going to ask if I may ask. Or is it is it still due to happen in, in person? I, no, I think it's going to be remote. It's going to be. It's going to be remote, I would have thought. I'm okay, sure okay members. Have, um, feedback or whatever. Yep. Yeah. could be perhaps Mr. Donnelly, if he's there, if you don't mind. Okay, that's that. So, if member, any member is interested in taking part, if you could speak to the clerk or any of the team, please. Um, if members any comments on the survey questions, uh, are you content that the team complete? The survey based on the views expressed, um, and that are uh, a few questions in the audit. We'll also need to get a view from the Northern Ireland Audit Office. Members, content with that? We progress on those terms. Is that okay? Right. Um, good afternoon, Mr. Donnelly, Mr. Bingham. You're very welcome, and happy New Year to you both. Happy New Year happy to you, Chair. Um, members are referred to correspondence dated the 17th of December. At pages 17 to 135, your pack from the Justice Committee regarding the Legal Services Agency (LSA) concerning the issue of the agency's accounts have been qualified for a considerable number of years. Justice, <coughs> excuse me, the Justice Committee suggests that the PAC carry a further inquiry into managing legal aid following on from the PAC's 2017 report. The legal Services Agency Northern Ireland annual report on the accounts for the year ending the 31st of March 2020, are also included in this correspondence. Can I suggest, members, that we would um, move to discuss this in closed session when we're discussing our forward work programme? Are members content that we do so? Agreed? Yes. OK. Um, members are referred to correspondence to the 18th of December 2020, pages 136 to 159 of your pack from Sue Gray, the Auditing Officer and Permanent Secretary, Department of Finance, in response to a follow-up letter on inquiry into our capacity and capability in the Northern Ireland Civil Service. The response is 24 pages long, which is a substantial amount of information and that uh, we discussed this for the inclusion in the report. Um, would the Controller and Auditor General have any comment they want to make on the information received at this stage? Uh, thank you, Chair. Uh, it is a a long response, uh, quite a number of questions. I suppose uh, if you're having a further session uh, on this, there'd be an opportunity to tease out some of the issues in the day's correspondence, as well as take into account some of the material in your subsequent report. Mm -hmm. uh, just, uh, I suppose, a couple of general comments. Um, some of the questions really were about uh, the role of central HR and HR connects. There's a lot of detail there. Uh, you see, there's um, you know there are two quite big operations, uh, I suppose, uh, and uh, interesting things just how many qualified staff, HR professionals are in there. So there are issues around that, um, and I suppose uh, the question is: is it punching to its weight given the, the resource it's got uh, and the way it's organised? So mm -hmm. there are definitely issues to tease out. Uh, and well, sorry, sorry to interrupt you, but as well as their own 300 odd staff in, in, the, in HR, 
they also buy in services as well. Uh, for what you would call the more transactional services, running the payroll and uh, sort of administering, you know, recruitment competitions and aspects of that. So, uh, so if you look at both together, you know, it, it's quite a sizable operation. There may be fuzzy lines between the two bits of it, but it gives you a flavour of the resource that, that's in there. I suppose the main point: do they need more? HR professionals in there. I don't know. There's about 30, I think. Is it 30 or 50? 50. 50 and 50 mark. So, uh, and I suppose its remit is pan pan public service. So there are issues there, uh, and other issues were around the uh, the rationale for the extension of the uh, of the HR Connect contract. Uh, uh, um, so there, there will be opportunity, as well, for the committee to tease that further out if you're having a supplement. Yep, I think, on I think it. that's okay. Members content with that? Okay. <clears throat> um, members, I refer to correspondence to the 18th of December, pages 160 to 164 in your pack, from Mike Brennan, the Accounting Officer and Permanent Secretary of the Department for the Economy, confirmed witnesses for evidence session on the generating electricity for, from renewable energy on the 28th of January. Um, witnesses would include Mr. Brennan, Mr. Richard Rogers, Head of, Head of Energy, uh, Department of the Economy, and Thomas Byrne, Director of Energy, uh, Department of Econ Economy. Content to note. Um, members referred to correspondence dated 21st of December 2020, page 165, your pack from Tracy Mahar, the Accounting Officer and Permanent Secretary, Department of Communities, regarding a delay in request and information. Are you content to note the response? Uh, will be with us by the 20th of January 2021. Content? It would be good if we had some yes. <laughs> agreement around this. Yeah, thank you. Um, me members, I refer to correspondence dated the 6th of January 2021, one, pages 166 to 167 of your pack from Sue Gray. Response to follow up, uh, engage sensitive information in accordance with the strategic partnership agreement contract. BT has not agreed uh, 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 to full disclosure on the basis that this would be contrary to the public interest and has potential to prejudice the commercial interests of BT. They would, however, agree to issue uh, the last row of the table in title Total Costs, brackets pre optimism bias and risk adjustment NPC, close brackets, um, 49284710 as this information relates to the original contract value on the award of 2020, sorry, 2012, with BT seeking uh, consent for the inclusion of Table 1 BT original tender submission. Ms Gray supports this exemption. Um, members, uh, in your table packs, pages 3 to 32, is the correspondence from Ms Gray dated the 11th of November 2020, which refers to Table 1 BT tender submission. Have members any comments on our members? Content that we do not publish the table as requested. Agreed. 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 Although I would just note, Chair, just one comment uh, on the um, BT. Uh, what BT said to DOF, it seems slightly odd that the BT. It's um, a BT. You're, you're entitled to say what what is and isn't in the public interest. That's quite interesting. In, 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 indeed, and 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 I'm happy if the committee want to dig into that deeper and seek more clarification and how many that we do that? I personally don't have a, I have less of an issue with the exemption, but slightly more concerned about the rationale for the exemption, the, the language contrary to the public interest coming from a, a... Okay. Well, do you want do you want a piece of correspondence to go and as, as a response to, response to that? I, I don't know if, if the if the um, Auditor General has any thoughts on that, but it just seems, just, it just it struck me as an odd phrase for a civil servant to use about a commercial organisation. Uh, yeah, no, I'm going to go back into your own draft report, which um, covers a lot of this ground, the generality and the principles involved. So that's why I covered uh, the particular issue is a couple of figures here. So there's a distinction between the, um, you know, uh, the fine detail of those couple of figures and the general principle, uh, which is, uh, you know, government should all the shots and what's in the in public interest, mm -hmm. not, but, uh, and that should be built in uh, to future contractual arrangements. I think I think the, the, the overriding point is given that the one hundred and twenty million pounds overspend was not at the public interest. Uh, so I'm happy if if the member wants to 
uh, propose that a letter go uh, around that issue. I'm happy um, to 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 um, facilitate that. Um, uh I mean, do, is, have, have we another piece of correspondence going on land web, and is that, or is this the end of the chain, as it were? It would be the end of the mm. chain. So it's just, um, I think, in terms of publishing the report uh, next week, we'd need to, or the committee would need to have agreed what's been published and what isn't. So this is the only outstanding mm. piece of information that. Um, so, uh, yeah. I mean, delaying, delaying the report by a week or so isn't a huge issue. We would obviously want it to go out next week, but um, the, the, uh, I'm, almost, I'm almost tempted to, in the point of view, the point that you're raising, Mr O'Toole, around the, Ms Gray supports the exemption. Uh, you know, just what the rationale for that is. Yeah, I, I would have less concern about the exemption. I mean, just reading it, it's, it's just the, the, the public interest line. It would be perhaps just be helpful to have a... Um, uh, yeah, an explanation, but I don't want particularly want to hold up the publication of the report. But, <coughs> but I'm not... I wouldn't worry about that. Right, OK. If you, if you, if you want that to happen, the members who want that to happen, that'll happen. Um, well, perhaps maybe that would be something to seek clarity on, either yeah, in strongly. some form. Well, I, I think it's your call, but um, I don't think anything here. The, the report uh, makes some really valid points on, um, you know, openness and transparency mm. and these sort of issues. So they're dealt with in, in general terms. Uh, what you could do is seek clarification, but I, I don't think uh, you know you don't need to delay. I don't think you need to delay the report to do that because uh, the report's fine. Uh, but um, it, it's to get some insight into why the department, why exactly do, does the department support the exemption? Yeah. I think yes. That's, yeah. Yes, that's that's the point of it. Uh -huh. But that, I don't, uh, getting that clarification, I don't think needs okay. to hold up. Okay. Well, look, let, the let, 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 if members are content, we'll do both of those things. Is that okay? Yeah. Okay with you, Clark? Yeah, just so are you saying that you will agree to, to the exemption, but you just want clarification on the rationale? So it's not it, It's not it. not that we'll agree to the exemption. What what what, what her rationale is as permanent secondary for agreeing to the exemption. Yes, but are you in agreement to publish the report yes. and leave that out? Mm. So, but you still want the the, the rationale behind it. Yeah. Oh. Okay. Yes, I think Read sure. everybody. Okay. Thank you. Um, members are referred to um, restricted correspondence dated the sixth of January, um, twenty twenty, page one sixty eight of your pack from Sir Long, Chief Executive of the Education Authority, regarding the timetable for the HR current investigation, which is the second investigation, as the first investigation is now subject to appeal. Ms Long has stated that the second investigation is about to conclude and a report is being finalised. However, she is not in a position to give an exact date as when the investigation will conclude. And she has also asked members to continue to treat the information provided with uh, um, extreme confidence, um, which we have and will continue to do. Um, I have to say, uh, this is as someone who is a member of the Education Committee and the Education Committee wrote to us around this, and Mr Little wrote to me some time ago, as you all know. Um, this is something which we all take very seriously. S uh, special education is a hugely sensitive issue, uh, and we need to get this um, uh, piece of work concluded. Uh, and I I'm not asking, this committee is not asking for a day when this will be published, but I think it's fair to ask for um, a, a timeline. Uh, and. If, if, as the Chief Executive says, uh, <coughs> that the, invest the second investigation is about to conclude and the report is being finalised, then I think it's fair that we should write back and ask, well, when will it be finalised? You know, will it be two weeks? Will it be a month or whatever? We, we can't just allow these things to be open-ended, which is the point I made before, because of the import of the issue we're talking about here. So. Would members be in agreement that we write back and ask for a indicative time timeline 
as to when this report will be concluded. Members agreed? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Um, Members are referred to correspondence dated the 7th of January 2021, page 169 to 170 of your pack from Katrina Godfrey uh, regarding the ministerial direction on the funding of a uh, Derry City Airport and why the full executive was not consulted on this matter to seek a collective approach rather than a ministerial direction and also her concerns in relation to the value for money aspects of the funding which led to a ministerial direction uh, and plans for the City of Derry Airport. Uh, after 20, March 2021. Has any member any comment? Content? Okay. Um, members, I refer to correspondence of the 7th of January 2021 on page 171 of your correspondence um, from Katrina Godfrey, um, uh, congratulatory, congratulatory letter uh, to myself on New Year's honour. There's no need for discussion on that, so uh, I thank her for that. Um, I, I refer to your correspondence referred to correspondence the 7th of January, pages 172 to 173 of your pack from the Treasury Officer of Accounts, additional information on the uh, annual theft and fraud report 2018-19. Uh, Mr. Stevens and TOA has provided a breakdown of the fraud by category, abuse of a position, assets and exploitation of information. Um, the controller and order generally comment on that? Uh, just one comment. So, uh, in the detail of that, it refers to a case that should have been reported to me years ago. The I'm going to look into that and to see. Uh, you know, all fraud uh, prisoners suspected. There's a requirement in managing public money that they report it to me. It's a bird's eye view of them. So, I usually will pull up departments if I find a case that um, is under the radar or I haven't heard about. So, I'm going to look into this one. Okay. <clears throat> Okay, um, members, can I just say I understood um, from the clerk earlier that Mr. Stevenson has been unwell um, and uh, was suffering from COVID, as was I think his wife did as well. Um, I think it might be um, nice if we were to send a card to Mr. Mr. Stevenson just um, asking, uh, wishing him a full and speedy recovery. If members in agreement? Agreed. Yeah. <coughs> um, okay. So, members, with regard to the, are you content to note that we will be re revisiting the subject when the 2019-20 annual theft and fraud report is published? Agreed. Um, members, I refer to correspondence dated the 8th of January 21, pages 175 of your pack from the Treasury Officer, uh, Public Accounts uh, Committee. Sorry, Public Accounts to me, Public Accounts Committee Chair. Again, on the New Year's honour. Again, no need for comment or discussion on that. Members, I refer to your correspondence dated uh, the 8th of January 2021, pages um, 176 to 186 of your pack from Pivotal, including a report on the new decade, new approach. Um, members content to note? Yep, sure. <coughs> if I could just say on that, um, congratulations to yourself. On the oh, thank, you. Ones. thank you very much. Thank you very much. You're here. Okay. Thank you. Um, in, the, in regard to pivotal members, content to note. Yeah. Okay. Agenda item six then is ministerial direction, uh, newly self-employed support scheme, uh, brackets N S E S S pages one eight four to two fourteen of your pack. Um, and at this point, uh, I would invite Mr. Donnelly and Mr. Bingham uh, to the table. And I think Mr. Patrick Barr whose director will be joining the meeting remotely. Broadcasting, can you bring Mr. Barr in, please? And suddenly he appears. Mr. Barr, can you see and hear us OK? We can't hear you. Are you, are you muted? Is your, is your mute button on, Patrick? Broadcasting, we, we we can see Mr. Barr, and I think he can hear us, but we can't hear him. If perhaps we could address that, Do you want to carry on? I can carry on. Yep. Yeah. And uh, whilst we sort out the gremlins in the line, um, I would uh, basically say, members, I re um, refer to the correspondence page in your pack of 11th of January. 
2021 at pages 188 to 214 of your pack um, regarding the ministerial direction uh, on the newly self-employed support scheme, uh, the Department of the Economy Permanent Secretary wrote to Mr Donnelly <clears throat> on the 21st of December 2022 advised that he had sought ministerial direction uh, from the DE Minister Dan Dodds MLA. <clears throat> Members, the background to the ministerial direction is to support newly registered businesses across Northern Ireland as the COVID-19 crisis has a, a placed significant strain on these businesses. The Minister considered it necessary to address these gaps in financial support through the introduction of local schemes as there is unfortunately a lack of support uh, for these businesses from Westminster. Uh, the papers in the pack include the relevant correspondence which underpins the decision to proceed uh, with the delivery of the two schemes. Uh, Annex A, 30th of November, letter to the Department for the Economy Minister and Associate Executive Paper advising of the need for a ministerial direction regarding NSESS. And Annex B, first the letter dated the 1st of December from the Minister of the Economy to the First Minister and Deputy First Minister requesting a decision by urgent procedure with attached paper and the 2nd of December response from the First Minister and Deputy First Minister and Annex C dated the 2nd of December, the letter of uh, ministerial directions issued by Minister Dodds. Um, Mr Donnelly, would you like to talk the committee through the ministerial direction, please? Uh, yes, thank you, Chair. Uh, we're getting quite a cluster of directions now, and that's not surprising. Nearly all of them COVID-related. Uh, uh, and uh, I suppose what we're saying now is uh, schemes that are coming into play to, to plug gaps in some of the earlier schemes. And I suppose uh, in the earlier self-employed uh, scheme, which was a national scheme administered by HRMRC, uh, that newly self-employed were sort of falling through the cracks because they hadn't a, a tax return for 1819. Uh, so that's sort of the, the case uh, for it. Uh, I'll also say that the, the process here, it's all followed proper procedure. There's no issue with that. Uh, where I was going to bring Patrick in, uh, if he can come in, yeah, uh, it just, was just to talk sure. about risks. Uh, Patrick, can you hear us at all yet? Or can we hear you, I should say? No. Whilst they're working to sort that out, do you want to carry on? It just proves this is a live show, I suppose. I think I, if we can, I can talk about the right. risks. Uh, okay. If necessary. I suppose okay. uh, uh, the, the documentation says there, there's a trade off between getting moving at reasonable pace uh, and, uh, you know, uh, assurance, uh, and there will be risks here in terms of, um, you know, um, will the actual support actually help these businesses? Uh, you will always have some businesses that would be, new businesses would be vulnerable anyway, irrespective of COVID, so it's very difficult to get, get a handle on that sort of thing. Uh, and I suppose it's also then um, there will be businesses Maybe a minority of businesses are doing quite well during COVID, so it, you can't really target something like this precisely. So there is risk with it. Uh, I suppose I say this is a signal then to me and my staff then to, to home in on this when, when we do the audit. So uh, mm. we've been looking at this along with the other schemes with directions when we do the, the audit of the, uh, the 2021 accounts. And if there's anything of issue to report, we can come back to the committee. So I suppose it's a signal for us to keep an eye on it. Sure. Okay. Members content? Yep. Okay. I'm just going to ask if I may remember. Briefly, just th th this is. I don't think any of the support schemes thus far haven't had not just in, with, in economies obviously done more of them than others, but most of them have had a ministerial direction of some sort, haven't they? Not all of them. And I'll, I'll no? come back to the committee on that. So it's not everything. Mm. It, there's so many. Schemes. We did a landscape uh, review. I think I spoke to the committee a number of months ago. And Patrick, if he can come in now, actually authored that, and uh, I think. Uh, are you on, Patrick? No. Uh, I'm trying to think. Um, can you hear me now? No. You, you can hear you now. Yeah. Uh, how mm. many schemes in total at the last count do we have across Northern Ireland, across all departments, support schemes of different types? Uh, 
There were large, I mean, like overall across all departments, there were around about 30 or more schemes um, that were operational at that time and, and that was, or being set up at that time, and that was in September of last year. So uh, we're reviewing and refreshing that piece of work now um, and hope to update it and have it out again um, in March or thereabouts to update the total cost. Uh, but there are quite a lot of schemes that there aren't directions. It's a minority yeah, of, yeah. Of, of schemes, probably the bigger spend ones. Uh, so it's, it's not across the board that yep. there's the direction on each scheme. Okay, members, content? And we, is, we may well revisit that, as Mr. Donnelly said. Okay. Thank you. Members, we will now move into closed session to consider the press release uh, for a report into Landway Project and the Digital Transformation. And we will then remain in closed session for the remainder of the business. This is the Northern Ireland Assembly Senate Chamber programme signed. This is the